I was testing the audio. I didn't have any other noise. Sorry. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's nice to see everyone out this morning, and uh, it's great to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, we would just like to uh, welcome those who, uh, who could not be here this morning, but who are going to enjoy the live stream and have chosen uh, to join us uh, as a family that way. Uh, we welcome you. Uh, we're glad that, uh, that you are with us as well this morning. I have a few announcements I'd like to share with you. I think, uh, I guess I want to start with Laura Bell. Uh, she is in the hospital. Uh, she's having a medical problem that she's had before, and and uh, Gary has spoken to her and prayed with her, and we're going to continue to pray. And Captain and I just left the group just a few moments ago, and uh, you know we're uh, praying for the technology that they have nowadays, and that Laura Bell will get back to us, and uh, that she could uh, enjoy the fellowship again with us uh, again very soon. Also, uh, if you remember last week, I uh, made an announcement about the sights and sounds trip that's planned for October the 12th. Uh, they, you know, tentatively, they're, they're hoping that they can open back up and that they'll be able to have uh, the uh, presentation of, uh, of Esther. Excuse me? Oh, they're open now. Well, that's great news. So, you know, we're, ho we're hopeful that... Uh, that they may be able to pull this off. And, but uh, if you've changed your mind or if something uh, has changed about your situation, I believe it was September the 6th you had to cut off for that. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, somewhere around the first part of September, if you've changed, you know, something's changed in your life and you can't, please let Major Braun know. 
uh, you know, she'll finalize the details and then work out, you know, uh, what needs to happen as far as you're concerned. Uh, there will be lunch at the Good and Plenty Restaurant at 2.15. Uh, recommendation is if you plan to drive by yourself, if you may want to leave around 7.30, quarter of 8, you know, so that you can arrive there uh, on time to be at the theater by 10.15. Uh, also, uh, if we'll follow on on the back of our program, uh, September the 4th through the 6th, uh, the Salvation Army, you know, after praying and, uh, you know, giving consideration, uh, they're, they, they've chosen to cancel family camp, uh, camp Tomahawk for, for that, for that weekend. Uh, September the 14th programs for youth and adults, September the 18th and 19th divisional music. In Arts Weekend, you know, we'll see how those things go. And then the plan is for October the 10th to uh, have a celebration at Camp, Tama, uh, Camp Happy Land uh, as uh, our division will be renamed uh, the Tommy. Uh, and the uh, captain has asked if he just would be in, in prayer you know, for our ministry and, uh, you know, thinking about ways that we can continue to reach out, you know, in spite of this virus, you know, God's greater than any virus. You know, and, uh, you know, and uh, although it's difficult, it's not easy, it's not impossible, you know, we can continue to do things if, you know, if we just take uh, precautions and uh, continue to, uh, to minister at every opportunity that we, that we get. Lots, lots going on, uh, uh, you know, here um, in, the, in this building through the week. You know, in spite of what's going on, a lot of people's needs are being met. Uh, you know, the social, the social uh, service program, uh, they're able to meet needs that way, so... We thank God for that uh, as well. So uh, please let us know uh, if uh, there's a specific prayer request that you'd like to have added to the list. Uh, you know, just a reminder that uh, uh, Bible study will begin back up on uh, September the 17th, but you can still get your prayer requests, make them known, you know, either on Sunday morning and or, uh, you know, any time through the week, you can let the pastors know. Yes, Peggy. Um, Lee Moore is also in the hospital also. Pardon me? Lee Moore is also in the hospital. I thought there was some more. Oh, okay. All right, Lee Moore. So let's remember who's with him. <laughs> Psalm 103, as David writes to uh, us about our Heavenly Father. And the song we're going to sing, uh, if you'll stand with us, it says this. This is straight out of Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, O my soul, I will worship his holy name. <laughs> Thank you. 
Yeah. 
said, I cannot stand out on you. Cause Jesus, you're my hope and savior. And when I cannot stand up all on you. Jesus, you're my hope and savior. Lord, I need you. Father, we look at the world around us. We we see the things that are going on in this world today. We see the things that are going on in our own personal lives. We we see our our friends and our those that are in our fellowship that are unable to come outside or that are in the hospital or that are sick. And Father, we just ask right now that you will come. Lord, that you will meet our need in this moment. We need you. We confess too many times we've tried to do it on our own. Too many times we think we've got this. That we'll get through it. We'll push. We'll persevere. That that we're going to be okay. And Lord, in those moments, humble us and remind us, no, you need me. I will carry you. I will lift you up. You cannot do this on your own. I am your defense. I am your righteousness. So, Father, we pray that right now, over each other, over this place, over those that are joining us through technology, those that can't worship with us because of various illnesses or afraid to come out. Father, we confess we need you. So, Father, turn our hearts to you. Bend our ears to you. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to be able to come out and worship, to be to be present with each other, to be the body of Christ. Lord, you are good. You're faithful. You, you have all of this that causes fear in us in the palm of your hand. We celebrate that today. But you did not give us a spirit of fear. Oh, Lord, help us to trust. Help us to trust. Lord, be honored with our worship today. Speak to us, Jesus. Give us ears to hear. We love you. Lord, I need you. Oh, Lord. Trust in you, Lord. And this morning, those that are here, trust in you. And those that are listening in, trust in you. So, Lord, we just ask you now to just, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So, dig deep in your pockets and give back a portion of what he lets us use. 
so he can further his kingdom for his glory. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Today, we're starting a new series. The series is what I'm calling In Real Life. Um, and a lot of times, we in our lives, we look through uh, a lens that we perceive to be real, but it's not actually real. Um, and in our media-saturated world, in our social media, our television, our, our entertainment world, um, we create perceptions and real, 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 I can't even say it, realizations. There it goes. We'll spit it out. Hopefully, no, I'm a mess. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, realization that things are one way when they're really not that way. And what we say is, well, in real life, no, right? We, we, we look at things like the Friends television show. Right? We look at that, or we, we look at social media, and what social media, or Instagram, or Snapchat, or whatever any of these things are. That's not real life. What we like to a lot of say is it's that person's highlight reel. They are not going to show you this. Is the, I, I watched a movie, and this just woke up like this, and the girl's got like makeup on, and beautiful. And I wake up, and I don't look like this. Um, all this that goes this way is usually over here, and you know, it's just not good. And, but that's the perception we want the people around us to have, and it's not real. And what we crave, though, as people is something that is real. We want something that's real in every aspect of our life. And so in this series, we're going to look at a couple things. And I've been doing a lot of expository preaching. Basically, what that means is looking at the word and pulling it right out. I'm going to shift a little bit to some topical uh, conversation because especially in the culture in which we are right now, we want to look and see yes. what looks like real or what is real to us. Uh, and so I want us to kind of pull some of these and give us some, uh, some ideas and some helps uh, based on scripture that we can pull out and kind of apply to our lives. Today, what we're really looking at is this idea of real friendship. Amen. Right? Real friendship. And we see television, we see movies, we see social media, we see culture, and we have all these friends, and everybody's supposed to be doing this. And you know, you can have a thousand friends on Facebook if you don't have a real connection with anyone. Amen. You know, if you look at the kids these days, um, I feel like I, I really feel like a grown up now. I have said what my father has always said. These kids these days, and I'm thinking, I was one of the kids, and now I'm not a kid. And it's, it's a little sad. Um, <clears throat> but you look at this, and how they interact, um, they don't interact. Um, I, I was hanging out at a youth council last year. Last year? Yeah, last year. And the kids sitting next to each other were texting to each other 
instead of just turning their head and having a conversation. Uh, they didn't know how to do that. The, the losing touch with reality, yeah. at least I would think, my kids uh, would rather be in a virtual world than a real world. Amen. Um, your kids or your family are probably that way. My, my kids are into Roblox right now, which is the stupidest thing in the world. But hey, whatever floats your boat. But they live and they want to play in this virtual world with people they don't know and doing things that doesn't even exist. It's not even real. Jumping all the skyscrapers and stuff. And so uh, we want to just kind of talk through a little bit about this because if we continue down that track, we will find that friendships, real solid friendships, will cease to exist. Amen. And what we experience, and, and, and older folks, adults like I, us, we have the same issues. Yeah. I will stay here and tell you, I have a hard time with real, genuine friendships. Amen. There's lots of different factors that play and moved a lot when I was a kid and all this stuff. But to develop those is very difficult for me. I can be very friendly, but I don't have that deep friendship. And so I'm preaching to myself as, as I go through it. I'll tell you, it was quite convicting as I'm studying for this message going, maybe I shouldn't preach this. this is stepping on my own toe up here. But it's, it's what needs to be heard. So we look at this and we have um, some opportunity to really look at what does a friendship look like? Why is it important? Aristotle, who was not a Christian, he was not a follower guy, he, he, he was doing some study, and he came up with 350 B.C., so before Jesus. Um, and he came up and he said, there are three types of real friendships. Okay? And this is what he came up with. There are friendships of utility, which means it's convenient to your life. Right? They are a friend that will help you out. You need, a, you need to pick up the phone and call. Hey, I need, hey, Bob, I need you to come help me uh, paint my house. And so Bob comes over and he paints your house. He's a good friend of mine, right? He's a friend of utility. Um, one of the examples I was looking at is like someone that when you're doing a handstand will hold your feet, right? Oh, come over here and hold my feet up. But there's no real depth to it. You know, you're your you're friend, but the you're kind of a utility yeah. friend, all right? Then they have the friends of pleasure. They're your friends that you hang out with all the time. Right, the ones that you do stuff with that go out, and but but it's very, um, it, it doesn't really go much deeper than just enjoyment of each other's company. Um, nothing too serious. You still stay guarded at times. I'm not going to share this with so and so. Um, I have lots of friends that are my friends of pleasure. I'm sure you have lots of friends in your life that are your friends of pleasure. It's I'm not really going to go deep with you, but man, you're fun to hang out with. They crack me up. I'd love to go to dinner with them. But I'm not going to sit down and share my deepest, darkest yes. secrets. You know what I'm talking about? You have the, And then what Aristotle says is there's the friends of the good, is what he calls it. And this is your deep friendship. They go through the good and the bad and the ugly with you. They will speak truth to you, even when it hurts. You have those friends? You know, they'll look at you. They'll look at you and kick you in the teeth if you need to get kicked in the teeth and tell you you are an idiot without, without you going, oh, you're not my friend anymore. Um, you, you, you know, and we, that is the level of friendship that almost everyone is missing, but we yes. crave desperately. I crave desperately and have nothing like that in my life, other than my spouse, right? And so we want to kind of look through that a little bit. We have these, but we don't, or we have a desire of these, but we don't really let people get into our lives. Now, the difference between all of these different levels is each level has a different level of intimacy, right? And that's really what friendship is all about, this idea of intimacy. And I'm not talking about, like, romantic relationships here. This is friendship. But intimacy, sharing with yourself and being vulnerable. We don't like to be vulnerable. I hate being vulnerable. My wife tells me, you never cry. Yeah, because I don't want people to know my feelings. I'd rather stuff them deep down inside until I become an explosion and I just go away and then... It, I've emptied out my bucket of, of whatever emotions, and now I'm back to normal. Anybody else with it? Are you in? Yeah, okay, Mr. Yeah, okay, I gotta go. Yeah, so we are peas in a pot. We can go there, we can yell at each other, and we're all happy again. But looking at that, you know, struggling with that level of intimacy. How much do I share? Do I share? Do I want someone to really know me? Amen. We have a deep desire. God put it within us to be known, to be yeah. fully known. Yet we become very guarded. And there's all kinds of things in your lives that, that keep you from being guarded. Uh, some of it's experiential. You had something, you experienced something in your life yeah. that creates you to go, nope. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. Something happened to you. You had a bad experience. Someone 
broke your heart, somebody uh, told, talked about you or told your business or what? Nope, not doing it. Some people have emotional, they just are afraid to be vulnerable. You know, they just don't trust people. I'm not going to tell you how I feel because you're going to blab it. No, I won't. I don't trust you, though. You know what I'm saying? We have that. Some people have those scars. And so they have a hard time being open and intimate with another individual. And some people are intellectual. They want to share their ideas. They want to do these. But uh, it, it, it gets really hard because what if you differ your opinion than mine? You know, all of a sudden we're not we're not friends or we don't see eye to eye on something and, and it creates conflict. And, yes. and how many of us hate conflict? Amen. There are some people that just thrive on conflict. You know what I'm talking about? That just like, please say it, say it, I'm ready to go. Say it. You know what I mean? There's just like a boxer just ready to Amen. spar. And then there's the other ones that are like, I'm a coward in the corner and die. Amen. You know what I mean? And, and it's just what it is. You know, people hate that. But if we look at these, if we look at those. If we can't connect, if we don't connect in some of these things, if we don't connect uh, with an opportunity to share our lives with people, uh, we will find very, uh, very deep struggle to create meaningful relationships and meaningful friendships. What social media and culture have done, they convinced us um, that there is not a real need for intimacy, right? There's, it's led us to a lack of being known. And there is a fear of intimacy with issues because of like abandonment, Amen. rejection, fear of being independent. Uh, maybe you've experienced a past abuse, yeah. and that causes you to pull away from real relationships. But the truth of the matter is this. God exists in a relationship, the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. God created us, humanity, for relationship with him. You remember, he created mankind last. He said, let us make man and woman, man in our image. And so he creates man. And then he says, it's not right for man to be alone. So he creates woman. Right? You remember this? And then in chapter 3 of Genesis, it says, when God would come in the cool of the evening and walk among the garden with Adam and Eve. And it shows that God didn't just go, plop, let's see how you do it. It wasn't some kind of science experiment. Let's see if they can figure this out. It was, I want to create something, and then I want to be with them. Amen. And I want them to know me, yes. and, I want them to, uh, and I want to know them. Amen. And I want to have that relationship, a well-rounded, deep, yes. intimate relationship. And that's what God has created us for. Yes. Right? He was fine with the angels. He was fine with all that. But when he created, he wanted something more. Amen. So friendship's a great thing, but we've lost it because we've lost this concept of intimacy that God has instilled within us. And so I want us to kind of talk through that just a little bit. Uh, first of all, this is, uh, if you take notes, it says this. Intimacy begins with our relationship to God. Amen. Number one, you cannot really truly experience, an, have an understanding of, of real intimacy unless you have an intimate relationship with God. And people say, well, I don't believe that's true. No, no, no. If God created you, right, he yes. is the, the author yes. of this idea of intimacy, mm -hmm. then you will not fully understand it in its fullness yes. until you have a relationship with God. Amen. How many of us are very good at being vulnerable with God? Amen. Yes. If, my, if, the, if the doors of yes. my car could talk, right, <laughs> I have so many, that, that's my quiet yeah. space. At home, I'm chasing dogs yeah. and children, and I'm, I'm, I'm losing my mind. But when I get in the car and it's just me, I have such good conversation yeah. with God. Completely vulnerable, open, yeah. wanting to hear from Him because I'm away from everyone. And God desires that for each and every yeah. one of us. I want yeah. to know you the way I know yeah. you. I want you to understand me and what I have for you. I want that. And it starts with understanding or being open to this intimacy with your Heavenly Father. If we don't know God, who knows everything about us, we have no chance of truly knowing each other, right? Amen. I'm going to turn to your Bible. We're going to be in Philippians chapter 3. This is Paul, and he's speaking uh, to, to the Philippian people. And basically what he's saying is, I've done all these things. I have tried to create relationships. I have made myself something. 
I thought I was something special, and what I realized is I was not known by my Creator. And I wanted to know Him. Yes. And so this is what it says. Whatever happens, my dear brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. I never get tired of telling you these things, and I do it to safeguard your faith. And he says this, watch out for watchdogs, those people who do evil, those mutilators who say you have to be circumcised to be saved. For we worship uh, by the Spirit of God are the ones who are truly circumcised. We say, these people, don't, don't worry about these people that are telling you you're not saved because you don't do something this way or that way. And he says, we rely on what Christ has done for us. We put no confidence in human effort, Amen. though I have confidence in my own effort if anyone could. Indeed, I have others, uh, excuse me, if others have reason for confidence in their own efforts, I have even more. So he says, listen, I've tried to make myself fully available to God. I have done so much for God. I've given up my life. I've given up my, my uh, opportunity for marriage. And I've given up all of that. Just so I could focus on who God is, because yeah. I wanted to know Him, Amen. and I wanted—I thought by doing that and serving Him, I would develop a close relationship with Him. He says other people have done it, but guess what? I've done it even more. I went to the nth degree to make sure that I did everything. I crossed off every Amen. single law that I could abide by in the Torah. That's what Paul says. But guess what? It wasn't enough. Amen. So he goes on, he says this, he says, I was circumcised on the eighth day. I am a pure blood citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew if there ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demand the strictest obedience to the Jewish laws. I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church, the Christians, because they thought Jews were correct, Jews were Christians were wrong. I persecuted, and as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. I did everything I thought I could do. To earn God's love, to be able to uh, know Him. And He says, And once I thought all these things were valuable, but here's the kicker. But now, now I find that they are worthless in spite of what Christ has done. Amen. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared to the infinite value of, here's the word, knowing Christ, yes. my Lord. Amen. Having intimacy with God, knowing Him. Mm. Understanding him, yes. connecting with him, Hallelujah. allowing him to connect with me, yes. to him to know me. Amen. For his sake, I have discarded everything else that everything else I listed, I throw it out. Amen. Because it's all garbage. Yes. So that I could gain Christ and become Hallelujah. one with him. I no longer count on my own goodness and righteousness though, uh, through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. Amen. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on just faith. Yes. And then he goes on. I want to know Christ yes. and experience the power, the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, yes. sharing in that death, so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection Amen. from the dead. He says, if you want to really live, if you want to have a true experience, if you want to have a real relationship, it starts with God. Amen. It starts with a relationship, an intimate relationship yes. Christ. I will tell you, every one of us will look. You say, Captain, I can't have friends without knowing Jesus. No, you can. You can absolutely have friends. You can have deep relationships with people without knowing Christ, but you will never truly understand the fullness of the intimacy that's available to you until you have that Amen. with Christ. Yes. Some of us are extremely lonely. Some of us are invalids. Some of us watching right now can't even leave your house. Amen. That doesn't mean you don't have friends. It doesn't mean you're not available. There is a God who is right yes, there with you, who loves you more than a brother. Amen. And he wants to know you intimately. Yes, he intimately. And he wants the same for you. It's personal. It's fulfilling. When we understand our relationship with God, we understand how to develop now the relationship we want with others. Amen. Two, God models the attributes that you should look for in a real friend. Yes. When you read through scriptures, and I'm, I'm not going to go with scriptural backup for everything you want, you can actually find it. Um, you can look. God is trustworthy. Yes, he is. Amen. Don't you want a trustworthy yeah, friend? Yeah. So in that when you go and you speak to them about yeah. some detail of your life, you know it's not going to be on front street. Amen. Yeah. God is loving. Yes, he is. Yep. And it's not just I love you, but it's not reciprocated. It's a it's a reciprocal yes, relationship. Yes. I love him and he loves yes, me. Yes. It's open. 
God, God is open to you. He, he is available to you at all times. He's positive. You're looking for a positive person. You ever been around someone that just speaks negative yeah. constantly, yeah. constantly, yeah. constantly? And you go, oh, when I'm going to talk to him, I feel like I've been beat up. Right? Don't we love being around negative people? It tears you up, doesn't Amen. it? It frustrates you. It makes you angry. You, whether you realize it or not, will become more negative when you hang out with someone who is negative. Yes. It's not like, well, you know what? I'm going to strike positivity in them. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. You can try to be blue in the face. But you will start to inherit those traits. Uh, respectful. God is a respectful person. He comes as a gentleman. He doesn't force his way into your life. And we want friends that are respectful. Right? We don't want people who are constantly condescending. Nothing feels good like you picked up and picked yourself up off the ground after a conversation with a friend. Right? We want a servant. Don't you want someone? God is a servant. He serves you. We have the picture of Jesus washing the feet of the disciples. We want someone who will serve alongside of us, Amen. that will meet our need, but we also want that reciprocated too. We want to be able to meet their needs. Amen. Right? And a speaker of truth. Mm. Nothing makes me, nothing uh, frustrates me more when I know the truth and I just need somebody to just validate yes. that for me. Even though it hurts sometimes. Yes. And they lie to me. Amen. They lie to me. And I'm not talking about, yeah, you look good in those pants on mm -hmm. I'm not talking about that kind of That's just marital yeah. life, right? <laughs> but somebody that will not speak the truth yeah. when they need to speak the truth. Yeah. Man, no, you do have an issue with yes. that. No, you are a jerk. Yes. You do this. Oh, cut me to the core. But it really it, it exposes. And what is this, the word of God? It exposes. Yes. It speaks yes. truth. God, God's, God doesn't pussy around, pussy put around conversations Amen. with anyone in the scripture, does he? Amen. He says, these are the things I hold against you. Yes. Here's the areas. I yes. told you not to do this. You did it. So here's the consequence. Yes. That's the way God works. And, and we want that in our lives. Amen. Even when we say, I don't really want that. You do. Yes. You do. So we have that. We have some God models that. So then, why, why is friendship a big deal? Well, because Jesus had friends. Jesus modeled this for us. You remember when Lazarus died? And he didn't come quick enough. And Mary and Martha, they get there and they're scolding him. You were his best friend. What is wrong with you? You should have been here. You could have done something. And then John eleven thirty five, we see these words, Jesus wept. Yes. And what it says is, look how deeply he loved him. Yes. He's bawling his eyes out. And then we know the story, Jesus did something Amen. about it. He raised his Lazarus. If you look at Jesus got 12 guys to walk around with him and he built a relationship with him for yeah. three years. He didn't just bring them under his wings and princes, he became their friends. Amen. He taught them, he led them, he, he showed them, he demonstrated life, a life that God would want yes. for them. But then of those 12, Jesus pulled three away, Peter, Amen. James, and John. And he really poured into them. Yes. And he ministered to them. So much that when John writes his book, he calls himself, instead of saying me or John, he says, the one that Jesus loved. Amen. The one that Jesus loved. Everyone else has a name, Peter, James. But I was the one that Jesus loved. I was his best friend. Amen. I was his best friend. He knew me intimately and I knew him yes. intimately. And so Jesus demonstrates, yes, friendship is something for me. Friendship is something that we need. And it doesn't have to be these friendships of pleasure, Amen. these friendships of utility. Yes. We want good, deep relationships. Yes. But it all comes back to the idea that Paul struck for us. Yeah. It's this idea of intimacy. And if Jesus considered friendships to be of great value, shouldn't we? Amen. Shouldn't we? So when developing friends... What things do we look for? What qualities do we look for? What is what won't be similar values? Things if, if you have a set of values, uh, the way that you conduct your life and say, This is how I'm going to live, this is the parameters in which I'm going to control my life or put myself in, and you have a friend that has completely opposite values, it doesn't really go so well, does it? Amen. No, because they're gonna drag you away. 
Proverbs 27, 17 says, Iron sharpens iron, and a friend sharpens a friend. Sharpens a friend. We need people in our lives that are going to build us up. Yes. That are going to make us stronger. That are going to refine us and help us. Yes. But that, only, that comes back to this idea of intimacy. If you never share yourself with somebody, Amen. then you will never have that in your life. Again, this is me stepping on my own toes. This is what he says, this is what Paul says to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verse 33. Don't be fooled by those who say such things, or bad company corrects good, corrupts good character. Think carefully about what's right and stop sinning. Yeah. For you know your shame. I shall say that some don't know God at all. Amen. Bad company corrects good character. That's why your mama wanted you to hang out with the right people. Amen. Right? Don't hang out with this person or that family or whatever. Why? Because bad company yes. corrupts good character. Amen. And we, it happens so quickly, we don't even realize. I had a friend growing up, um, I guess it was like high, late high school, early college, um, and you know, swearing was like nothing. Like, I've eaten a lot of bars of soap, okay, let me just say. Uh, we didn't do that in our house. That was not part of our life or anything like that. And I remember I had a friend that he, he was... He was kicked out. He moved out of his house, whatever. He would live with us, and he had a, a pretty bad mouth. And, and the music and things that we would listen to were, were not edifying. And slowly but surely, my language changed. Yes. Didn't realize it changed. Started by just singing lyrics on, our, on the radio or the or we had CDs back then, mm -hmm. um, and we would we would listen to those, and, and my language began to change. It began to change, and I remember the day that I came home and I had a conversation with my mother, and I spoke without even thinking because it had become so ingrained in my head. And when I woke up um, after getting knocked out on the floor, um, it dawned on me: I've got to stop yes. listening to this. I've got to. And I had to get rid of things. I had to start changing relationships and where I put up participate. Yes. Why? Because bad company yes. corrects corrupts. Corrupts good Amen. character. Amen. You will become who you hang out with. Yes. That's why real relationships matter. Amen. Because if it's all about pleasure and it's all about just hanging out and it's all about fun, yes. then you will quickly be corrupted by those things. Second thing is common interests. That's pretty easy, right? If Gary and I enjoy the same thing, then it makes it very easy for Gary and I to hang out. If you're if you're a big basketball player and I hate basketball, then we're not going to games together. And so common interest is a huge thing. But sometimes you have to get to know somebody to find out what those interests are. It takes a conversation, right? You can walk down the street and I can see that, you know, some people have a Lakers jersey on or something. I go, obviously he loves the Lakers, right? He's shaking his head hard. <laughs> Celtics. Celtics. Okay, so apparently he doesn't like basketball. Then. No, no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. But if, if you have that and I don't have that on, and we kind of conclude well on that, maybe, maybe not. But we find out common interest by being with each other. Yes. Right? No relationship, no friendship, nothing starts deep. And it starts. It starts right yes. here on the top. Amen. Very shallow, yes. and then it grows deep. Amen. But you find common interest through that. Likeability. Sometimes it's just a connection. When I went to Arrow, there was a guy um, on the bus with me, and he and I never met, never, and he has become one of my best friends. Like that. We just walked in, and it's just like there was a connection. And it's awesome. But it didn't just click. It wasn't like I'm sharing my life with him in that moment. But by the end of a year process of this, we can call each other and say, hey, man, I just want to check in. Likeability. Sometimes, and then sometimes there's just people you don't like, and that's okay. Amen. Right? You look at them and just go, oh, I can't stand so and so. You know, they're just rubbing the wrong way. We all have those people, don't we? We have those people just, just like sandpaper on each other. You know? But that's okay. You will not be friends with everybody. There's not a Bible verse that says you have to be friends with everybody. What it says is you must love one another. I can love you without liking Amen. you. Amen. That's right. Right? 
And then the last is uh, connecting, uh, or excuse me, consistency of your time. Your relationship uh, will stand the test of time if you do this. If it doesn't stand the test of time, then it's not really. If it stands the good, the bad, the ugly, we walk through life together, we did life together, we've seen things together, we've experienced things together, that will shape your relationship. And you will have more opportunity to deep, be deep in friendship with people. Everyone has a need for close relationships. God has created us as social and emotional beings. We thrive in healthy relationships and find great fulfillment there. Keep in mind all healthy relationships, uh, excuse me, in all healthy relationships, we should be asking, what can I do for the benefit of my close friend? Amen. How can I love my friend? Yes. Not what can this person do for me? Yes. Realizing that Jesus had close friends and reminding us of God's intentions for relationship, he designed friendship to be caring, loving, and intimate. Yes. That's our word for it, intimacy. Yes. To have these, we have to realize it's our responsibility to find and build healthy relationships, and to do so, we have to reach out to others and treat them the way we would desire yes. to be treated. Amen. Looking for their best interest. We need to be willing to, to slowly share our hearts and allow our friends to do so as well. Everyone's, everyone has a fear of rejection. Amen. But someone has to reach out first. Yes. Be willing to take risks, realizing that we have nothing really to lose. Amen. I tell my, my kids all the time, but what if they don't want to play with me? Then they don't want to play with you. They're going to play with somebody else. Well, if they say they don't like me, then I don't like them. Just go do something else. As we seek genuine friends and live the message of, of Christ, that we want to have friends. We have to be friendly people. Um, we will discover that the biblical principle really works. So I want you to think about them. Think about the friends that you have. Think about them. Do they sharpen you or corrupt you? I'm not telling you to go home and just disband a bunch of friends and be like, I didn't have a friend of me. I'm not telling you to go through Facebook and just delete people. But what I'm saying is, think about the way you interact with people. Think about those relationships. Do they make you better? Do they sharpen you? Do they grow you? Or do they tear you down? Do they take you down a bad road? Does your relationships uh, with them make you better? Does it make you better? Are you getting out of that relationship what you need? And are you giving what they need? Why or why not? Do you have an intimate relationship with anyone? A deep relationship with anyone that you can speak truth into their life or those qualities? Go to the best. Are they trustworthy? Are they loving, open, positive, respectful, servant, speaker of truth? <clears throat> Are you do you feel truly known? Do you feel truly known? This jumps to the, the social media days and, and all this is we don't know each other anymore. We look at the highlight reels, we gossip, we talk. Some of us just sit at home and are really lonely. No engagement with really anybody else. No one reaches out. We don't really reach out. Are you known? Are you just existing? You know, some days I feel very much like I just exist in life. There are many days where I just go. I had a phone call that hasn't been work related in four days. You know, no one's texted me unless it's something about work. In those days, I feel very small, and I feel very left out, and very alone. Amen. And I ask myself, do you have any deep relationships? And I say that because I know I'm not the only one here. Because I want to tell you this, God knows you. Yeah. You can always start with Him. Amen. You can always start with Him. You can always call on Him. Yeah. You can always reach out to him. You can always be vulnerable with him. The beautiful thing about the relationship with God is when you're mad, you can be mad. Yes. I mean, even Jesus was mad. What scripture says is don't sin in your anger. But you can be mad. Yes. You can be frustrated. You can share your heart 
with him. And you can ask him to bring relationships, real relationships, Amen. into your life yes. today. Amen. And he's not sitting there going, like, nah. He would say, yes. Because I want you to have that. Yes. But then it's our side where we have to say, I'm willing to be wrong. Amen. I'm willing to step out. I'm willing yes. to try. I'm willing to open my <clears> arms <throat> to someone else. Yes. And do that. So, media, social media, TV, movies, entertainment, says we should be doing all these things and, and living this life. But, in real life, in real life, we want real relationships. In real life, we want intimate relationships. In real life, we want to be known. So, I pray that over you today, find some of these things. Think about some of these things. Yeah. Allow, the, allow the Lord to open doors for you in those things. And then allow yourself to be vulnerable. Amen. Let me pray for you. Lord, thank you that you have, uh, one, created us to be in fellowship with you. But Father, I just also thank you that you have created within in, in each and every one of us a desire to be known, an intimate desire to really engage with other people as well as with you. And just as Paul discovered through all of what he, he did, all of the work and all the efforts and, and the self-denial and all these things, he still was lacking and it just came, nothing compared uh, to being in relationship, intimate relationship with you, knowing you in your fullness and experiencing that in return. And so, Father, right now, I just pray that over our court, our congregation, whether you're at home, uh, watching where you're here. Our, our world is getting increasingly lonely and increasingly disengaged uh, socially. Uh, we've got more social networking platforms than ever before. We still feel alone. And right now, Lord, there's so many, especially from our congregation, that are stuck at home, that are isolated, that, are, that can't come out or they choose not to come out. And so, Lord, we just ask right now that your touch will uh, be on them. God, open an opportunity for us to have real, good, not corrupting, but good relationships with each other. Father, bring us people that we can share our lives with, our real, deep lives, that you may be brought glory through and that we may be brought fulfillment. And, uh, and, uh, we love you, Jesus. We thank you for this time together. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great week. Oh, yes. I told Ms. Ruth to remind me. Uh, we got a donation of pork loin. Pork loin. Tons of it. Uh, we filled the freezer. We can't take anymore. We don't want to have to throw it out. So if you would like some pork loin to take home with you, Ms. Ruth will be standing right over here to make sure I don't give away something I'm not supposed to. Um, and, and you can take some of that to help us, and we'd like to bless you with it as well. So uh, And don't feel like, oh, I'm going to take it from somebody else. We've got more than we hope to do. Who are you? Oh, yeah. I always wanted to hear her. Good job, Mason.